Um, Uh, so we will begin like with the sessions that are intended uh, for guest lectures. Our first session is from the Faculty of uh, Engineering. Uh, first, I will invite, I will get like, I will allow like just a moment like for everyone to get comfortable. Like I hope you guys enjoyed the tour, and I do hope that you will enjoy like the the future sessions. Like I've seen all the presentations. My bad. So I've seen all the presentations, and those are like some very impressive topics to be covered. And I think that everyone is going to. Uh, if you don't know something about the field, you're going to enjoy learning about it. Uh, and if you do know something about the field, you're going to have somebody to network with. To begin uh, with the opening of the, the session, I, I invite like the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, uh, Professor uh, Alexandra puryazuska kuyunjiski uh, to have a welcome speech. A round of applause, please. Thank you. Uh, I'll be, I'm only oh, this is shorter, so I will adjust it. Thanks. Apologies, okay. make it like this? Yeah. No, I think better. Okay, uh, dear guests, dear colleagues, unfortunately no students uh, yeah. since it's uh, the first week after the midterm exam, so they are so exhausted. <laughs> uh, thank you for the participation and uh, thank you for uh, our international guest uh, for choosing uh, the Faculty of Engineering first of all and uh, the International Balkan University to accomplish their uh, teaching mobility activities in the uh, frame of the Erasmus uh, Plus project. Projects. So I will just give you give you a brief information about the Faculty of uh, Engineering. Uh, this faculty is the second established uh, faculty at the, uh, our university uh, in 2007, uh, and uh, starting with first two study programs: Information Technology and Industrial Engineering but uh, with um, re-engineering of the faculty in 2014, uh, the faculty was rebranded with a uh, different name. Actually, uh, the first name was the Faculty of Technical Sciences uh, with the new name of uh, Faculty of Engineering, uh, where we, when we uh, accredited uh, four study programs and in, and, uh, at uh, undergraduate study level. Uh, industrial engineering, management, uh, computer engineering, architecture, and civil engineering. Uh, in the meanwhile, we made the accreditation of the four study program at the master level uh, in industrial engineering, computer engineering, architecture, and structural uh, engineering as a continuation of our first cycle studies. Currently, we have accredited uh, only PhD studies uh, in computer engineering. So, and we are looking for to for, forward to uh, make the make the accreditation of the uh, much uh, let's say updated uh, topics, interdisciplinary topics, uh, and uh, study programs programs which uh, will uh, be able to produce uh, the graduated. Uh, engineers that will be faced with the uh, uh, current uh, worldwide problems. So with uh, no any ado, I would like to thank particularly to our to the, uh, today's presenters uh, and uh, the colleagues from the uh, universities in Turkey. And on Wednesday, if, as far as I understood, we have a, a presentation uh, from the staff of uh, the University from France, uh, accomplishing their, uh, their uh, mobility uh, for internship. So uh, I would like to thank uh, to uh, Professor Servet Karasu and Dr. Masuid Latifi Navid from the uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan University and uh, uh, Faculty of Engineering, University of Turkish Arne Arneutical Association, from both from Turkey. So we are looking forward to see and hear your presentation. So thank you for your attention. I wish you a pleasant
pleasant stay at Skopje. I hope that uh, this uh, uh, your presence will be used for establishing uh, many networks for uh, future joint projects. And uh, I wish you, in general, pleasant stay in our country. Thank you. Bye. So as the Dean mentioned, first up we have Dr. Servet Carasso uh, with the topic on an overview of harbor planning and field studies in coastal structures. Can you see this one? Yes. So you would just have to move it like this. Okay. Wait, give me a moment, like, if I stop presenter view. Is this better? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. No problem. Dear Dean, dear your office, and dear my colleagues, thank you for hosting and thank you for your hospitality. Uh, my presentation, I am, uh, my name is Servet Karasu from uh, Civil Engineering Department, Recep Tayyip Erdoğan University, Rize, Turkey. And uh, I will give a presentation about the harbor planning uh, because of my expertise. I don't want to give some more uh, technical details. Uh, I'll have some, actually, I will give the outline of the, this is the outline of my presentation. I will start with the promotion of Rize, province of Rize and uh, our university, Recep Tayyip Erdoğan University. I will give some definitions about the harbors and uh, uh, field studies for harbor planning. Uh, laboratory simulations, and I will give uh, a case study uh, results at the end of my presentations. I will have some videos, maybe uh, I don't want to bore you, and I will use more pictures. You know the, where Turkey is. Uh, I am coming from the city of Rize, is northeastern part of Turkey, and the total coastline is over 8,000 kilometers. Turkey is a peninsula, as you can see. And uh, because of the, uh, this number of coastline, uh, coastal structures and harbors is very important to us. Uh, maybe we have every 100 kilometers, we have one harbor in each city. Turkey, uh, Rize has a 8 kilometers coastline in the Black Sea, northeastern part of Black Sea. The population is 350,000 whole province, and nearly half of the people is living in the city center. And uh, Rize is the rainiest city in Turkey. Uh, annual average precipitation is 3.30 uh, meters. It's raining uh, more higher than me, <laughs> two meters every year. Half of the years is rainy, and maybe this is the rainiest city, one of the rainiest city in the world. So, because of rain, whenever people say Rize, and the tea is comes to mind to people, Rize, Chai. Maybe you hear that. And the second activity in Rize is fishing, past the. Uh, most important one, tea. After tea, it's coming fishing. Our university founded 2006. Uh, actually, uh, before this date, we together with the Karadeniz Technical University in Trabzon, and we separated from at this date, 2006. Now we have one institute, uh, 15 faculties, three high schools, six vocational schools, and over 15,000 students. Now I will give some definitions about the ports and harbors because my presentation is related with the harbors. Uh, a port, you know, uh, I'm sure most of you saw a port. This is the easiest and largest port in Europe. Europe. This is the Rotterdam uh, uh, port. A port is a location on a coast or shore containing one or more harbors where ships can dock and transfer people or cargo, cargo to or from land. Harbor is a little bit smaller than ports. Uh, and this is the two 
different harbors. And also uh, in English, English and in American English, uh, a small difference. English, English, uh, there is a, they are using U sign, but in American English, they use like that harbor. There is no U sign. If we classify the harbors, uh, at the beginning we have artificial harbors, and these are man made harbors, and uh, we have uh, uh, breakwaters, main breakwaters, and secondary breakwaters. This is the view of Rize Harbor. The second one, natural harbors. Some harbors is natural, and this is protected uh, the waves to ships in natural wave, like in this picture. And some of them also semi-natural uh, harbors. One side is natural, the other side is uh, man-made breakwaters has. If you look at the biggest, top 10 biggest ports in the world, if you look at the countries, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of busiest, biggest harbors are located in China. I think it is not surprising. And the others, listen to China, Singapore, South Korea, and this is the top 10 biggest ports. And the most important thing to choose the site for a harbor, these are the seven uh, important uh, things to choose a site. First, we have to look at the availability of land and construction material because we have to use lots of materials for construction a harbor. And the second one, nature protection from waves and winds. Transportation and communication facilities should be taken into consideration. And what is the, we have to look at the industrial development for locality. And also uh, in terms of geotechnical issues, we have to look at the seabed, subsoil, foundations. We have to look at, the, we have to take into consideration. And also defense and strategic aspects is also important. And traffic potentiality of the harbor is another issue to choose a site. What are we doing for investigating a harbor location? First, we have to know the morphology of harbor. What is the bathymetry? What is the uh, bathymetry of harbor? Uh, it is more important, most important thing, uh, the location of harbor and morphology of sea bottom. And we have to define, we have to determine the morphology of harbor. So we have to know the bottom morphology and we have to make some measurements. We are using some tools. One of them is, uh, as you can see in this picture, called uh, echo sounder. It is possible to measure the depths up to 75 meters. And this is a a single beam echo sounder and also we can use sometimes multi beam echo sounders. And as you can see, we are using a, a rubber boat or wooden boats. And in the boats, we are using a GPS to collect the uh, positioning data and uh, echo sounder is connected under the sea level, maybe 25 centimeter is enough and uh, echo sounder collect the depth data and there is a computer on the boat and the computer uh, connect each other and collect the, all of the positioning data and also depth data together. After we collect, this is the uh, a picture from the operation and uh, echo sounder sends acoustic beams to the bottom and after hit the bottom because of the sound, and they come back to echo sounder, and so we can uh, we can see the depth of button. And here is the lines. We determine the lines before the study, and we follow these lines. These are uh, 
Correct. Uh, at the beginning, we determine these lines and we follow these lines during the operation. And these lines should be, uh, the interval is 10 or 15 meters generally. And uh, also, we have cross lines for the quality of uh, data. This device also, uh, some of them is familiar with that. This is the total station and also uh, GPS system and also it's corrected our positioning data. This device uh, help us for corrections of our sound velocity because during the uh, measurements salinity, uh, uh, density and temperature affect the sound velocity and we have to know the, uh, this data and after operation, we have to correct the sound velocity data. After collected the, all of the data, we have to check in three-dimensional hydrographic map we are using, and we look at the, all of the uh, uh, bathymetric data. We checked the data, and we created the lines we obtained during the operation. And also, we created 3D view of the bottom. After we created 3D vision of C bottom, we can now uh, it is time to decide the, where we can put the location of the breakwaters. And also, uh, now you can see the bottom uh, of topography. You can see the depths in this picture. And after we determine the morph morphology of the bottom, uh, it is easier to put the breakwaters in here. If you look at the breakwaters, we refrain from the big holes in left side and in front of the breakwater also there are some holes and we refrain from these bottoms because of morphology. And also you can see the location of the breakwaters, we refrain from the big holes. After we decided the location of the breakwaters, we have to know the soil specifications. So, we have to make some drillings uh, just under the breakwaters and uh, wave, uh, also harbor basin. We know the specification of soils and we choose some places to look at the uh, soil specifications. So we have to drill to these locations and take, we have to take some samples. And now you can see on the left side, this is, the depth is in here 20 meters. And we, uh, we went to, uh, we took the sand samples in here. Another, we go to another 20 meters. Totally, we reached 40 meters depth from sea level. And I will show a, a short video related with the, this drilling. I want to show you. The sterling belongs to study during the study. We have to know the specification of soil and we have to take sand samples. Maybe you get the idea because it's enough, I think. Let's continue with the a second video. Yeah. No, uh, with the presentation. presentation. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. 
Is this the one? Is it okay? Yes. Okay. And the other things, we have to uh, determine the winds and waves. Because three important there are three important parameters for harbor planning. We have to know the wave heights, wave period, and wave direction. And we have to determine these three parameters. To determine these th three parameters, we have using some methods. This is the uh, first method. Uh, these devices collect the data directly. We called this device wave buoy. This is it's, uh, the collected data with wave It's uh, really expensive. It's very expensive devices, and uh, these are collected the wave heights, wave directions, and the other parameters. And uh, this is a very, very reliable uh, method to collect the data. If we don't have these tools, what we should do? And the second one, and also. This is called ADCP, Acoustic Doppler, Acoustic Kernel Profiler, and also collect, the, it is possible to collect the data with this device. This is also uh, very expensive devices. If we don't have WeeWee or ADCP, what should we do? This is the second method. We are using uh, mathematical models. Uh, we are using satellite data. And from the satellite data, uh, we try to find wave directions, wave heights, and the other parameters. Now, we, you can see in the uh, first picture, we called wave rows, and it is possible to see the wave direction. Now, you can see the wave direction is northwest, and you can see the wave height period and the other parameters easily from mathematical models. This is cheaper than the other one. But yeah. the first one is more reliable if you have enough time and enough money. And the, uh, the other important thing, uh, we have to determine the oscillation of harbor. Uh, you choose the uh, breakwaters, you choose the location of uh, harbor, uh, and you have to check the oscillation of the harbor. The, what is the waves? What should be uh, the waves inside the harbor? And also, we are using uh, some mathematical models for harbor oscillation. And this is the results of the uh, harbor oscillation model. And uh, 50 centimeters, the waves inside the harbor is less than 50 centimeters. If we have more than 50 centimeters waves inside the harbor, we should take into some measurements. For example, we can change the uh, direction of the breakwaters, or we can extend the breakwaters a little bit further. And uh, we check also uh, with the, this mathematical model also uh, what is the waves, and we found less than 50 centimeters now we can decide it's okay in terms of wave oscillation. And now we can determine the cross section of the breakwaters. And I will show a cross section. And think about this cross section. This belongs to one of the cross sections of the breakwater. Think about this cross section. Uh, as I mentioned before, these really huge structures, these are. For example, uh, if you look at the, this cross section and uh, look at the, this, uh, this is two over three uh, slope. And here is, for example, if we have 20 meters depth, you have to go 30 meters in one side and 30 meters the other one side and also at least 10 meters at the, the top. Uh, the total length at the bottom, at least 70 meters. And it's almost 25-story building. 25-story building just um, uh, lies at the bottom. It's really huge and uh, expensive structures. And so we have to be very careful to design these. And 
we have to choose what uh, type of uh, stones should be used for these layers. We called armor layer in here. We called core layer. We have to choose the armor layer material. There are different types of armor layer material. I will show some of them. This is the biggest one. This is uh, almost 40 tons. And uh, I will show some pictures. And you can imagine the, how big it is. These are different type of uh, armor layer stones. Uh, actually, these are man-made concrete. These are uh, called tetraport. These are called uh, X-block. This is the rubble mount breakwater. This is the natural rocks. And this is a site visit with my students. And this is called Antwerp blocks to protect the shore. These are just in front of our university. There is a uh, field in front of our university and it will be used for recreational purposes for uh, some uh, facilities. And they used these Antwerp blocks to protect this field. And also, I showed the pictures of X block, and this is the biggest one. Uh, you can imagine that maybe two times is higher than a person, and the weight is almost 40 tons. This is this belongs to Rize Artvin Airport, which is now uh, under operation. It's opened last May. Now you can see the, how to build a rubble mount breakwater. I will go a little bit fast and put the armor layers. And we are using these equipments to build breakwaters. And during the uh, project stage, we have to take, uh, we have to think about some alternatives. For example, this one is belongs to Plan A. We are uh, we put the stock area at the back, and for different alternatives, we took the stock area to here. And also, for future planning, we have another alternatives, and we have to use some alternatives during the uh, project stage, pre-project stage. This is really uh, expensive structures. Also, we used laboratory simulations to check the uh, breakwaters and other things. I will show some studies related with the laboratory studies. And we are using Cardin's Technical University Hydraulic Lab. Uh, here is a wave basin in the hydraulic laboratory. We are preparing the bottom of the laboratory for experiments. Here is the, some plan for a study. We are using a total station to uh, check the bottom topography. And we simulate this place. You can see the, this fishery harbor in here. There is two groins over there. And we simulate the field to laboratory in here. And also, uh, we have videos in here also. This one? Second one, yes. Yes, this is the field on the left side. This is Fisher Sh Harbor. Should I play them at the same time or like? No, okay. no it's not possible. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, so you could see. Yes. We try to simulate the nature to laboratory. I think it's enough.
<laughs> so, because we're a little bit ahead yeah. of our agenda. Now we're simulating on the laboratory at the same place. With the simulations, it is easy to decide what can we do for uh, different alternatives. Yes, that's it. I think it's enough. And after uh, finishing laboratory experiments, we have to check the for example, shoreline and the other things. We uh, have different designs and it is easy to check the laboratory alternatives according to corresponds to natural alternatives. Now I will uh, give uh, some information about the case study. Maybe uh, you didn't hear artificial nourishment is there anybody here? Artificial nourishment? Artificial nourishment uh, because... Coastal uh, restoration. Coastal restoration yeah, is, yes. Because most of the time there is no beach in some uh, areas. We have to make uh, people want to uh, beaches and uh, we are taking sands from uh, sea or from land and put the sands uh, to this place and to obtain be recreational purposes beach. And it's called artificial beach. And uh, here is a uh, case study. This municipality chose this place because of uh, there are two groins to protect this area. They put uh, almost 80,000 cubic meters sand uh, and put uh, this area like this. And here is my uh, master students, and uh, we decided to uh, check the performance of this beach. Uh, we look, uh, we decided that if we, uh, this beach will be uh, succeed or fail, and we follow the, this beach one year. We follow the, all of the movement. Here is the land surveys. Uh, a mobile satellite receiver uh, we used. It, uh, we fixed just a, a backpack and we collect the position data like that in the land and up to one meter depth. After one meter depth, we used uh, rubber boat, as you can see before, and also we uh, have our studies continue one year. Every one month, we did the same studies in periodically. <laughs> so, I didn't put the, uh, all of the videos to PowerPoint yeah. because it's not possible to to uh, save the PowerPoint. Yes. I know. Yes. Uh, the problem is, give me a moment, uh, because I have to, yeah. Not this one. Oh, it's not this one. No. By walking. By walking, yes. Yeah. This is the one. This is. Okay. The. Okay, this one. Okay. No. <laughs> give me a moment. What can I do? This is the one by walking. Yes. No, three. Yes. Okay. And it has to open over here. Okay. Now we are collecting the depths up to one meter, like that. Here is my other master students. Yeah. How many points did they get for this? This is a, a, a couple of times faster. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the actual. And with this way, we collected the depths. Actually, after uh, this uh, scenes, we lost our drone. 
and it's out of control and we lost the drone uh, after that one. Give me a moment. Oh, this is the one? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, wait, wait, I will stop it. Number four, maybe. Feel, uh, is it feel yes. uh, I will continue with the Oh, with the presentation. presentation okay. Just give me a moment because like, I have to drag this from the other. Give me a moment. Uh, RIT guy is not here, so you're going to have to like bear with me. Uh, we will continue the slideshow from the current slide. Oh, no. Problem solved. It's uh, maybe uh, you should sit here. Yeah, okay, I'll sit here. Yes. <laughs> Kish, uh, we followed these lines during the uh, moment of the beach nourishment, and I will show yes another video. Okay. I will show the moment of our boat, our survey. So this is the yes. one. Okay. Um, So the other one. Oh, this one? No. This one. This one? Okay. Just a moment. I'm thinking. Yeah. Now we can see the, our lines, and our boat is going these lines. We obtained these lines after the study. <coughs> now we are taking our measurements and we follow all of the materials, what happens to sand, where are they going. This is our last measurement. All of the sands are go on. We choose calm weather. Otherwise, it's not possible to go like that. And it is not possible to obtain these straight lines. The beach was in here, but this is the last measurement. All of the materials goes to cross shore, and then I will show the results of this measurement. Our apartment just over there, <laughs> and it is easy to With look binoculars at yes, to look if yes, your master students yeah, are finishing yeah, their job. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> this is faster. Maybe two or three times faster. Look at the cars. Yeah. Actually, we have to keep some, uh, uh, we have to take control our speed. It should be 4 knot. It's equal to 2 meter per second. If we exceed that one, uh, data is not uh, collected very well. I think this is enough. Presentation, please. Uh, it's similar video. Okay. Yeah, sure, we but don't, yes. Can we skip? <laughs> because, because we, we don't have time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And these are the results of the bathymetry. But I will show these figures. It is easy to understand what happened after nourished beach. Here is the at the beginning of beach. They put 80,000 cubic meters sand to this area, and just. 15 days later, look at here, at least 50% of material goes to cross shore. One month later, still continue. This sends the red ones, goes to cross shore still. After one month, still goes to cross shore and left almost the, uh, all of the materials left from the beach. Another one month. And if you look at the reds, red points, it goes to it completed the cross shore movement and they started to they started to the red ones it's not uh, seen very well, 
it is easier to uh, show, uh, look at the uh, C in here. Here is a little bit red lines, and movement is goes to, here is the north, sand is goes to from west to east because of dominant wave direction. Dominant wave direction for this area from uh, northwest, and due to the, this wave direction, all of the material goes from west to east.
swarm uh, missions and uh, for example uh, the vertical takeoff and landing uh, UAVs. Uh, so here the, our first mission is to um, uh, generate some research teams from undergraduate and graduate students. Uh, the first goal is to free up their imaginations because a good project, a good product comes from uh, uh, brilliant imaginations. After this imagination, we try to uh, change uh, this imagination to uh, a real, uh, a realistic pr project pr proposal. And uh, then we, we try to define some uh, uh, work packages uh, with uh, key performance indicators in order to follow up the uh, project prox uh, progress and uh, then we define the short, mid-term and long-term uh, actually goals for our uh, teams. Um, but uh, It was really chaos to manage the, all of the projects together with. Uh, now I want to share you some uh, videos related to different types of the projects that we uh, worked on them. And uh, you will see that uh, the, the, the different branches of the UAVs that we are working with them. Uh, then um, actually you will understand how it is difficult to uh, manage the work package related to different types of the uh, unmanned aerial vehicles and unmanned system. This is drone uh, flying. Uh, it is composed of some uh, secret uh, sensors in front of it, and the secret sensors. Uh, find the uh, drone and it is uh, autonomously, uh, they, they guide the UAV toward the drone autonomously. The next example is related to the uh, indoor non-GPS guided mapping uh, drone for uh, using in the, for example, case and indoor missions in order to prevent uh, in order to generate um, maps of the uh, indoor places and also autonomously prevent any collision uh, when uh, the drone flies. So uh, on, on, the, on the drone we have uh, a couple of sensors that of, like ultrasonic sensors and the lidars in order to uh, generate the map of the uh, indoor places. So, uh, actually, this, this project is completely different from the previous one because in the previous one, we, uh, get, uh, we get the uh, GPS data. <coughs> but here, we have not any GPS uh, feedback. Uh, but there are also fundamental uh, similarities that we, we want to focus on them uh, while uh, uh, presenting the uh, or uh, actually special project management techniques. The next example that I want to share with you is a hybrid UAV UGV swarm uh, system, which is uh, composed of two drones, helicopter drones, and one unmanned uh, uh, ground vehicle uh, that. Uh, we have the real-time video transmission in our system in order to uh, intelligently
object, we detect the uh, object, and then uh, with a uh, carbodrome, we will send some kind of medical assistance to uh, the uh, area that uh, is necessary. As you see, uh, this is our ground vehicle. There is a, a drone on the uh, ground vehicle, on the robot, and uh, it has a camera in order to send the uh, uh, videos uh, in real time. In a, it actually, we designed this platform for disaster management, in the, uh, for example, like the earthquakes and the natural disasters. Uh, the drone sends uh, the video in real time to the ground station and uh, also it automatically <coughs> identifies the people uh, using the intelligent algorithms and then uh, uh, shapes the GPS coordinate of the object, GPS coordinate of the person with the ground station, then the cargo drone uh, we'll go to the same uh, coordinate and uh, drop the uh, cargo. I just use the uh, intelligent uh, detection of the uh, people, and this is the cargo uh, sending operation. Again, uh, th 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 this is uh, a very uh, different and uh, different uh, project, but. Uh, we should uh, have, uh, figure out some similarities, some uh, actually um, similar work packages with the previous uh, projects in order to uh, actually manage all the projects together with, in order to save the time, save the efforts, and uh, increase the efficiency of all uh, project management efforts. Uh, this is the, uh, actually, I think uh, the last example, uh, maybe the uh, hybrid balloon uh, and multi-copter system. Uh, it's composed of balloon uh, and uh, a five copter and uh, it, 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 it is used for surveillance missions in order to uh, observe the borders that there may be uh, jungles, the uh, uh, nation, in order to um, uh, send the real-time video uh, data to the ground station and uh, sometimes managing the uh, operation. Here, uh, the uh, lift is uh, supplied by the balloon and uh, if it uh, passes its predefined route, the uh, multi-copter actually revises the route and uh, sends it back to the, uh, the plank uh, route uh, in the uh, mission area. This is the real-time video transmission by uh, using this uh, system. It is a vertical takeoff and landing uh, UAV. Uh, it is uh, actually uh, it has a novel uh, body structure. It's, com uh, it's made uh, of uh, it has been made of uh, a kind of flexible composite material that is developed by our uh, research and development uh, center. Uh, this flexible body uh, will not be broken if even if the uh, drone. Uh, be crashed and it is very uh, strong material, uh, it is flexible and useful for this kind of applications. Uh, this is the project that we uh, developed for uh, the International Technical Office Competition. Okay, by the way, as I mentioned before, we uh, define the short, mid-term and long-term uh, goals for our uh, research teams. Uh, actually, uh, all based them, them First goal is uh, participating in the International Tech uh, competition in the Turkey, uh, which is a very big uh, organization. And in uh, 2022, more than 600,000 of the projects are uh, 
uh, were applied, uh, were submitted to the uh, organization. In the, in the, uh, so many fields, uh, we have competitions in the online aerial vehicles, in the robotics, in the uh, chip design, in the uh, disaster management, in the uh, uh, useful technologies for, for, for the human, humanity, vice versa. Uh, we prepare all research teams uh, to uh, participate in this uh, competition in this competition uh, and uh, with respect to the agenda of the competition we design or uh, work packages we design or timelines okay now let's talk about the challenges okay these are these are the projects and are different kind of projects that we deal with but uh, the challenges are unbalanced team member skills, uh, developed algorithms are not extendable, uh, lack of time for supervising many projects, not enough interaction between the teams, not achieving uh, actually uh, planned goals in the term project uh, management software. Uh, in order to increase the efficiency of the project management, we try to use, I, I, I first of all we uh, actually made a, a WhatsApp group for each project and tried to manage the project using the WhatsApp and uh, it, it was really inefficient. Uh, then we tried to use some kind of project management software like the Microsoft Project Project Professional or Asana or there are uh, many uh, applications. But the problem was that uh, even we defined some, the, some work packages and we define some timelines and uh, key performance indicators, uh, sometimes we cannot follow it. Actually, uh, the efficiency uh, was not uh, uh, good uh, for all uh, projects. Um, we found, found out that uh, sometimes the team members in the projects uh, are uh, specialized in, in, in a, a single Field. For example, in the software engineer, in the or, for, uh, or in the mechanical engineer. So we try to uh, uh, make the team from different disciplines, from management department, from industrial engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, uh, mechanical engineering, in order to uh, share the uh, work packages with them, share the load of the work packages with them, because uh, when you uh, work on a project like unmanned aerial vehicle, unmanned system, there are uh, uh, so many types of the uh, work packages. You should deal with the communication, you should deal with the design, uh, airfoil analysis, uh, mechanical uh, analysis, mechanical design, uh, circuit design, uh, software engineering, vice versa. Uh, uh, your team should be expert in all of the disciplines. If you cannot manage a team, uh, if, you, if you cannot uh, develop uh, a team with uh, uh, experts in the, all of these fields, uh, there, uh, it will be an asymmetry. You cannot uh, reach the goals in the design, in the plan, uh, time. Uh, that's why for the second year uh, we try to organize the teams with uh, management and industrial engineering at the, at the top level. We are responsible for the uh, reporting, for the managing the team, for the following the uh, timelines, the board packages, the key performance indicators and uh, send the reports to the team members and the supervisor. Then the mechanical engineer is responsible for the designing and the mechanical analysis. Aeronautical engineering the students are responsible for the uh, airport analysis, the body analysis of the airplane. Electrical engineering the students are responsible for circuit design. Uh, there are flight training departments in the university that are responsible for the, uh, for the uh, test, test flights. And uh, the students from the computer engineering are responsible for that, for example, mapping uh, operations, uh, autonomous uh, flight control, uh, 
uh, and uh, also the software engineering students are responsible for that. And mechatronic engineering students are responsible for the uh, sensor fusion analysis of the uh, sensor feedback, uh, feedbacks, and sensor data, like the GPS, like the gyroscopes, uh, the machine vision making it. They are independent of each other, just we have a messaging system uh, between them. We send the message, we don't care what is happening inside the node, inside the block. Uh, for example, we can uh, implement uh, communication, visualization, perception, motion planning, robot control, computer vision, hardware drivers, simulation, data logging, and machine learning using robot operating uh, system. Uh, and uh, you don't need to, for example, write a whole the system with a single programming language, uh, for example, like C++. You can have a node with the Python, you can have a node with Java, you can have a node with uh, C++, and using the robot operating system, you can send the uh, message to a node and uh, only get the response and use the response from uh, that node uh, as input of the other node. So uh, it is very helpful for us in the robotics. Actually, we inspired from this system in order to uh, uh, actually develop a new uh, project management uh, technique. Uh, this is the uh, example that I uh, uh, mentioned. There are uh, messaging, messaging uh, systems between the nodes. For example, this is the service client, ser uh, service server, and uh, subscriber node, and uh, only we send the uh, message and get the response. Uh, it is uh, similar to the um, object-oriented programming. Uh, you, you may know in the computer uh, engineering. Uh, of course, in the computer engineering. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we define some uh, classes, and we don't care what is inside the class. Only we uh, get the uh, output of the uh, methods of the classes. It is similar to uh, that. Okay, uh, we use this inspiration in the project management. Uh, we try to define some um, uh, similar nodes for the projects. Actually, in all of the projects that I mentioned before, we have communication. We need to have a real-time, maybe, uh, video transmission. We need to uh, make wireless communication between the ground station and the UAV. Uh, we need to have serial communication between the autopilot chip and the uh, ground station. Uh, we need to uh, get the feedback from the uh, UAV sensors uh, in real time. So uh, the communication node uh, is important and it is, it is necessary for all of the similar projects. The next one is object detection node. In the, for example, in the... Um, uh, hunter uh, drone, hunter uh, UAV, uh, we need to detect the uh, illegal uh, flying uh, drone. In the, for example, uh, hybrid UAV uh, and UGV project, we need to detect the uh, person in the uh, disaster area. And uh, we define the object detection node uh, as the second node. The flight training node. In all of the projects, we need to have a uh, flight training. Autonomous flight node, calibration node, simulation node, they are, they are uh, actually uh, the, the board packages that are necessary for all of the projects. So uh, we, uh, in our teams, we have one person that is responsible for uh, one, each of these nodes. So uh, we prevent any kind of 
uh, repeat in the workshops. We don't need to uh, actually have the workshop, the same workshop over and over for each team. Only for each node and the responsible person in the uh, team, we can uh, have our workshops and uh, uh, we can train them. Also, uh, in that node, they are the people from different projects. They can learn from each other. They can change their, uh, they actually share their knowledge and uh, they can transfer their knowledge to the next uh, people who will uh, actually participate in our uh, R&D center in the next semesters. Uh, Uh, and uh, implementing such a kind of project management techniques, uh, we increased the efficiency of the um, efficiency of the um, uh, project management in the uh, R&D center more than more than three times. Uh, what is the key performance performance indicator? Uh, actually, the UAV is a whole system, and when you want to measure the uh, efficiency of the project management, all of the infra infrastructures should be ready and uh, then you can uh, have a test flight. So the number of test flights shows the uh, progress of the uh, project. And uh, using such a kind of project management, we could increase the number of test flights uh, within the last three months, uh, three times in comparison with the previous year. Okay, it was a very fast uh, <laughs> and so a brief uh, introduction about our system. Thank you very much. If you have any questions. Uh, thank you so much to Dr. Latifinavid. Uh, apologies for rushing you a little bit, but I think uh, the major points were covered and the most interesting points were covered, like those that make uh, people like pay attention to, to the topic. And if anybody obviously like has any additional questions or uh, if you want to get together later, you can ask him personally. And also you can, uh, the, um, as you know, like the members of the engineering faculty are required to be tomorrow at the presentation of the CC Ecole de, de Um Yeah, thank you for the confirmation that I pronounced that correctly. Uh, starting like at 1 p.m. Uh, tomorrow uh, on the same floor. So you'll be able to like ask him questions and you'll be able to interact more among yourselves. And also like you will have like a meeting with, uh, you will meet the dean. And you'll be able like to uh, ask and discuss and hopefully collaborate in uh, any projects. So uh, for what did I say? Oh my bad. So sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so like the meeting like with Ceci is uh, on Wednesday at B three hundred one at one uh, p.m. I apologize. So those of you that are here, apart from the students, students have to stay here. Uh, can go outside on the coffee break while we invite like the uh, uh, panel that needs to come now. Yes, Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the exams like finished like a last uh, uh, yesterday, actually. On Wednesday, yeah. So, thank you so much, Professor. Anybody watching the live stream who's an engineering student is required to be here at 1 p.m. on Wednesday. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So, all of you that are here, apart from the students, students have to stay here. Uh,